All right. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, this is a little video that I've prepared for you to kind of help you think through uh, the organization of a complex essay. OK, um, we've talked a lot about it in class already, uh, and you know all sorts of stuff about this from your prior coursework and your own experience. OK, um, but I want to take some time to really help us think through this issue of organization and setup, right, really emphasizing the amount of setup you have to do in order to, um, you know, bring your audience along with you as you're constructing a more complex, multi-pronged essay. OK, um, a lot of times what sort of stumps people at the beginning of their drafting process is that you know, they've got their working thesis and then they leap right into their analysis. OK, um, and that can it can be it can be a good way to draft. Right. But it can also kind of cloud the issue. It can it can it can further um, muddy your thinking around what it is you want to say. OK, uh, so organization is really one of the hardest things to, to grapple with. Absolutely. Right. So so I think if we approach organization um, sort of in a practical manner, right, um, we can move forward. And when I say practical manner, what I mean is uh, by thinking about the structure that your instructor has given you for, say, page length, right, all of those kinds of things, um, what they want to see in it, the lit review and so on. Um, so uh, in MLA format, double spaced, right, um, a single page of paper is essentially two paragraphs, right? So if you're aiming for, say, a 10 page paper, that means you have 20 paragraphs to work with, give or take, right? 20 paragraphs to work with. Now, once you've got that, you can start kind of um, saying, okay, well, I want to have two paragraphs of introduction with thesis. I want to have two paragraphs of lit review. I need to have a paragraph that introduces this key component, um, this key text. I need to have a paragraph that introduces this key text, okay? I need to have a paragraph that introduces my key theoretical approach or key concepts, right? Um, and then I need to transition into my thesis, like where I really get down into the nitty gritty of, of analyzing and explaining my thesis, okay? But then you have to go back and sort of restate, right, your central point, right? And then in the, the second half of the paper, really the second, like, two, uh, the, the last third of the paper is where you're actually doing the nitty gritty analysis, okay? And that's where you um, you support that main point with reference to the, the, the key sort of concepts or topics that are most important for your thesis. Okay. And all of these should be things that you've kind of set up before in your in your summary of the text, in your uh, description of the key concepts that you're working with from your lit review, in your explanation of the key theoretical idea, right, um, and so on. And then once you've done that, then you have to have a section where you address the so what, why does this matter, right? And that's kind of like where you go a little bit deeper and kind of unpack a little bit more why this matters, right? Uh, and then you've got your conclusion paragraph. And when you put all of that together, it's very easy to come up with a 10 page paper, right? Um, so let me show you the um, sort of little PowerPoint or sort of a uh, way that, that I might go about doing this, okay? With a specific thesis statement, okay? so. All right, so let's take a look at this idea, okay? Organizing your essay. So you first wanna start with your research question, right? Um, here's a research question for, um, for uh, one of our students in this class. What's the impact of the change in focalization between the two Disney versions of the Sleeping Beauty tale, the 1959 film and 2014's Maleficent? That's my research question. Notice a couple things about this research question. It's specific, right? What is the impact of the change in focalization between these two films, right? It's very specific, right? Um, but the thesis, the research question also kind of lays out the, the, the things I'm going to be dealing with, right? Two Disney versions, 1959, 2014, right? Focalization. Then your answer to that question is going to be your thesis, right? This shift in focalization, emphasizing Maleficent's story, shows us that the depiction of the villain in fairy tales is contingent and it can change over time. And this causes us to rethink our assessment of the source story. Okay. And there's a sort of an, an additional so what there, right? That this idea is really important because animation and fairy tale, children's animation, fairy tales, they have a real hold on our collective unconscious. So 
So they, they carry a lot of power, right? They carry a lot of representational power for us. So that's important, okay? And I want to kind of keep that in mind. Now, once you've got that basic working thesis done, then you can start laying out an outline um, for your for your the sort of logical components of your thesis. Right? Now, worry about the intro and the literature review and the conclusion. Worry about all that stuff later. I'm, I'm being like very literal with this. Just forget you even have to do an introduction. Okay, <laughs> forget you even have to do a lit review at this point. Go back after you're finished with this part. Kind of layer them in. Right. So. I'm going to assume that paragraphs one through three, one and two, right, or uh, around there, right, are my intro and my lit review, okay? Um, and we'll come back to the lit review in a bit. But let's forget about that stuff, right? Um, the logical key comp logical components of my thesis are, well, this 1959 Sleeping Beauty. I have to introduce that. I have to tell people what it is and what's important about it for my purposes, okay? I'm going to have to talk about, I'm going to have to introduce the 2014 Maleficent film, right? Notice I'm also using a chronological, right, structure here. I'm not starting with the 2014 Maleficent film. I'm starting with the 1959 version of Sleeping Beauty, okay? Um, and then I'm going to introduce the 2014 film. Uh, and I want to do so in a parallel way. Okay? I want to do so in a parallel way. So um, the first paragraph is sort of this part, okay? The second paragraph might be a basic plot summary. And the third paragraph might focus on the key issue for me, which is the main character and how that main character is treated. Okay. So I'm going to have like um, at least two paragraphs of introduction here. And it might be that the first one is sort of the details of authorship and the basic plot summary. So this could all be one paragraph where you say, you know, the 1959 version, Disney version of Sleeping Beauty was an animated tale, um, you know, that that was really important in uh, the era it sort of emerged from because it talks about, you know, these values or whatever. And then this is what the story is about. Um, and then I move into the next sort of main um, component that I need to introduce because then I'm going to get to it later, right, as well. I'm going to go into more depth later. Um, I need to introduce how that main character is depicted, okay? And then I'm going to do the same exact thing, right, with the next film. So I'm going to use parallelism to help me with that. So I have, I have paragraph one and paragraph two. Okay, so this is four paragraphs of introduction. That's two pages. Okay. Then I have to make a shift to my key sort of theoretical concept. I'm going to have to talk about focalization. Like, what the heck is that? That's something in my thesis. I have to explain it. I have to, you know, connect it to my two films and just in an objective way before I get into my specific analysis, right? So, um, so I'm going to um, have to introduce focalization and define it, okay? This is going to be one paragraph. And then I'm going to have to state briefly, and this could be one paragraph or these you know, this could be another paragraph or these two could be connected, okay? It's kind of up to how you do that, right? Uh, it's, how, you know, what kind of details, what specific ideas you want to kind of nuance your, your discussion with, okay? Um, so I'm going to have to explain focalization. What the heck is it, right? How do we know it, what, how do we know it when we see it, right? Um, and why is it important, okay? And then I'm going to have to talk a little bit about, you know, what is the 1959 film doing with focalization? Well, it, it focalizes through the main character, right? And it encourages us, the audience, to sort of see from her perspective. She is the victim, but she's also the heroine. And, you know, she's a very good character in this, 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 and this way. And so the, the focalization encourages us to see her, right, in that, in that light. And then how in the 2014 film. Okay. Now you, depending on the amount of like detail you want, you could do this in two paragraphs or you could do it in one, but you definitely need a paragraph here and you definitely need at least one here. You need a paragraph here. You need a paragraph here, paragraph here, and a paragraph here. Okay. Um, and after you've sort of explained the idea of focalization and talked a little bit about how we actually simply see it in these two films, then you can get into your sort of climactic moment of your story, which is the sort of heart of your thesis, okay? This shift, which I've already talked about here, this shift in focalization complicates the notion of villainy, right? So we have to kind of state that, right? And you can write one paragraph that does this and maybe this first point, right? 
because we see from her perspective. And by virtue of seeing from her perspective, we have a different view of what makes for a villain, right? Um, maybe it's a little more complicated than we thought before, okay? And so I put this one first because that idea of perspective, not like first person point of view, second person point of view, third person point of view, but sort of the way that the story is encouraging us to, you know, who's the story encouraging us to side with, okay? Um, that idea of frame of reference, okay? Um, I'm going to put this one first because it's really foundational and it connects to the prior section, okay? And then I might move into my second point of analysis, which is the example that, well, Maleficent is given a backstory, right? So that's a part of how she's being, um, we're being encouraged to sympathize with her, that we see her backstory, okay? Um, and then the third kind of key point I want to make is that, well, Aurora herself also gets fleshed out. She becomes a much more multidimensional character, okay? And that makes her less one-dimensional. It makes Maleficent less one-dimensional and so on. And in fact, Maleficent actually ends up saving Aurora, right, in this version, right? And the, this is a more complex idea because it's not just about saving or not saving, right? It's that it's that um, Maleficent, it, it, her backstory and her characterization in this new version informs these choices, okay? So I, that's why I put them in this order. And these are my paragraphs of, of analysis. So now I have four paragraphs of analysis, okay? Here I have two paragraphs, here I have two paragraphs, and here I have two paragraphs. Okay, so this is already two, four, six, eight, ten paragraphs, all right? So I'm already at the fifth page, the bottom of the fifth page. And now I have my so what. And the so what is kind of where you're, you're, um, you're resolving things, okay? You're going to have to make the case that, that this all of this stuff makes us rethink the way we thought before, right? And I might have another paragraph that talks about sort of the power of representation in these adaptation choices, okay? So maybe this is two paragraphs, right? And then, uh, and then once I've done all of that, I can go back and add my intro and lit review up here and my conclusion down here, okay? So now I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, uh, 12 paragraphs. So that's six pages plus say um, six and a half, seven, eight. I've got about, so far I've got about eight, eight and a half pages. Okay. It's not quite a 10 page paper, but it's really, really close. And some of these can be um, fleshed out. And there may be other ideas that as you're drafting, you realize you need to spend a little more time on. Like maybe this idea about Disney is really important. Maybe I need to state um, some, maybe I need to do a little research about sort of Disney's politics, right? They're, they can be, they're, especially in the fifties, right? Forties and fifties, they were they were sort of a bastion of white Americana, right? Um, and when, you know, it was a, a sort of thing for children to learn from, okay? Um, so I may want to say something about the way that Disney has kind of evolved as a, um, um, as a, as a creator, right? As, a, as a, a production site of these films, right? Because they're both by Disney, right? So, um, so those are, uh, sort of things you want to do when you're thinking about sort of the logical components of your thesis, right? Um, and once you've got there, then you can go back and do the intro and the lit review and the conclusion, okay? So you might have your intro paragraph and thesis there, the literature review. Think, think of the literature review as like one to two paragraphs where you show that you've done your homework, but it, you don't have to show every last detail of your work, okay? Like you did in the source analysis. Instead, you want to think about what the salient points are, okay, of your um, your research, right? What are the most important ideas from your research that inform your work in this essay, okay? Um, and you want to kind of think about what order in which you're going to talk about those things. And remember, you're you're going to want to bring Hutchian in, okay? So you want to think very carefully about the order of your your topics, okay? Um, and then you've got the, the remainder of the points that we talked about last slide, and then you've got your, your paragraph or so of conclusion, right? Um, so if you do these later, you will be able to sort of determine from the natural way in which you're outlining the, the sort of logical components of the meat of your essay, um, what those key important ideas are. So then you can go back and kind of craft that lit review from all of that work that's now in the back of your head that you've done from the source analysis essay, from your drafting here and your outlining and so on, okay? 
Um, but you don't want this project to be about your sources. You want this project to be about your ideas, right? Um, so something to think about. Uh, all right, so um, so once you've kind of gotten a good a good second draft of all of these things, right? Remember to think about that idea, that mantra of one page is equal to about two paragraphs. Okay, so this is everything that I've got together. Uh, so I have one paragraph here. Oops, sorry. Um, let me see if I can do this right. So I've got sort of one paragraph here, um, two paragraphs here, right, and maybe that. That second one is this, um, you know, lit review, right, by Hachi. And I wonder if I can move this. No, I can't. Okay. Um, and then I've got my uh, my paragraph that that sort of introduces and gives a basic plot summary of the first film. I've got my next paragraph that sort of talks about how the main character is depicted in that first film. Then I'm going to transition into the later film. I'm going to do the same thing using parallelism. Okay. Uh, and then uh, notice that because here I'm talking about how the main character is depicted, that gives me a logical transition into focalization. What is it? Okay. How does it operate in the 1959 film? How in the 2014 film? In general, right? One brief paragraph on each of these, or depending on how you do it, you could put them together. Okay. And then I'm getting to the sort of height of my argument. My, my point that this shift in perspective is going to complicate that earlier idea, right? In, that we see in the 1959 film about what, what makes for a villain, okay? Uh, and so there's my, my first central point of analysis. My second point of analysis is the point about the backstory. The third point is maybe Aurora getting more fleshed out. The fourth point being that this idea that, that the story, because of these changes, the story actually has shifted as well, right? It's become more nuanced and more complex. And then the so what? makes us rethink what we thought before, right? Um, tie together with this idea of um, how uh, adaptation works to sort of speak to its different um, eras, right? And then uh, my conclusion, right? So all together, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 paragraphs, okay? So that's about, that's about a, you know, uh, um, an eight and a half, nine page paper, okay? Um, okay, now that's one way to sort of think about it, but there are other ways that you can kind of think about um, your work as a as a um, as a as a writer as well, and that is by thinking of what you do as like storytelling. Okay, now when you're telling a story, when any any author that you've read that you enjoy, right, they don't they don't tell you the moral right right at the start and and then leave it, right? <laughs> um, no, they get you invested in it first. They they draw you in, they tell you the backstory, they give you all of this important sort of extenuating information, right? And then they get to the main point about how the character is reacting to this, this trouble, right, that they're in. And then you have the sort of falling action, the ultimate resolution, whether it's tied up nice and neat, or if it's more ambiguous or whatever, right? So by the end of it, you have a sense of significance, a sense of why this all matters. Okay, how all these parts fit together, right? Uh, so if you think about your uh, essay as a story and yourself as a storyteller, um, I think you can uh, you can see the same sort of progression, right? So uh, this is the Freitag's pyramid um, structure of a narrative arc that you're probably very familiar with. Um, so if we start here with this portion of exposition, okay. Um, we start here with this portion of exposition. And in your essay, that's kind of where you're beginning to set up your argument, like in the introductory section. Now, of course, you might write this later. Any good author will not start at the beginning and just go straight through to the end. They'll sort of piece things together and then go through and revise and add more and flesh out and so on. But here's your introduction. Then you've got this sort of inciting incident. And in your essay, that's going to be your thesis, right? And that's going to get your audience to kind of, let's go further. Let's investigate this, okay? Now, the rising action here, sort of rising action, is about maybe the historical context, the theory, you're, you know, you're building your setup and your thesis out. And this is really where the lit review comes into play, right? The lit whoop, review. I can't really write with this little thing. But anyway, so your lit review, any theory, any historical context that you need to do, you need to put it here, Okay. Uh, the climactic moment, right, is in, in your essay, it's where you really start stating and laying out the centerpiece of your argument, okay? Um, 
And in uh, the one we were just looking at, that's like the importance of the shift. This is what the shift does. Okay. You have to sort of state that, bring it out, make it really visible and vivid to your audience. And then the falling action, the, the falling action is where you develop all the stuff that you point out in your, um, in your climax, right? In your thesis here. Uh, what's the significance? You begin to project the conclusion, which shouldn't really feel abrupt, okay? So you're beginning to sort of set up why all this stuff is important, right? Doing more of your analysis with that goal in mind and so on. And then the resolution, right, um, is basically that so what point, why all of this matters. And then the denouement, right, um, is your conclusion paragraph, okay? So they're parallels in uh, the act of storytelling, um, that I, I think you can you can benefit from. Okay, so uh, think of yourself as a storyteller and your art your your arg argument as a story. Right? So here again is the Freitag's pyramid. Okay, and um, what I've done here is sort of overlaid and color coded um, all of the different paragraphs. Right, so you can kind of see how they might um, fit together. Right. Uh, so again, intro thesis, lit review, transition with the idea of adaptation, introduce the 59 film, basic plot summary, how that character is treated in the narrative, and then the same thing with the second film, moving into this concept of focalization, right? Why does it matter? How does it function in these two films? Here's my thesis, my sort of central point restated, not this thesis over here, but like your sort of you know, returning back to it. Think about what you're doing as like a loop of sorts in, in some respects, right? A spiral, right? You have to come back and touch on this and then state it very clearly after we've gotten to all of this great setup, right? Um, and then you get into your analysis, how this happens, how this happened, how this happens, okay? Uh, and then your so what, your resolution, and your denouement, your conclusion paragraph, okay? Um, so I'm, I don't know if this will help, right? Uh, but I, I hope that it, that it will. Uh, and, um, you know, if you think of what you're doing as not just diving right into your argument, right, right there at the beginning of the essay, but taking the time you need to really set up your ideas so that your reader is likely to agree with you. Okay. You want to make sure that your reader follows you from point to point to point so that when you get to something that's a little more complicated, right, your, your reader is going to be like, oh, okay, I, I totally get that. That makes absolute sense given what I know about Disney, given what I know about vocalization, given what I know about the 59 versus the 2014 film and so on. Okay. Given everything that I know about this, I'm now primed and ready right, to dive into the detailed analysis that supports that key point. Okay. Um, okay, so I hope this helped. Um, I don't want this to be too long of a video, but um, but I hope this helps and um, over break, right? Definitely work on your uh, your second draft, okay? Take your outlining work, take this concept of sort of structuring your argument and any of our one-on-one, um, -on -one, right? Information and discussion um, to heart to kind of help you work through your second draft. And when we come back, we'll do some uh, more nuanced and refined peer review um, so that we can really uh, put the polish right on uh, for your, your final project, okay? Bye.